Okay, in this lecture we're going to talk about file attributes. Uh, we've actually been uh, looking at the file attributes quite a bit already, uh, but maybe we didn't really know what they were, and so I'm going to explain that a little more in this lecture. Of course, we know how to do a long listing. We've done it quite a bit. Uh, here's just a screenshot of a long listing from uh, my home directory on Shamu. And uh, the file attributes are basically what is contained in this long listing. Uh, we start over here on the left. These are the file permissions that we're going to talk about. Uh, the second is uh, just something that is a reference to the number of links to the file. Uh, the second is the person or the, uh, the uh, user who owns the file, in this case uh, for the file above above my home directory, or I'm sorry, temp, uh, there the, the is root. Um, the group is the second uh, column of names. Uh, in this case, all the groups are assigned to the username, but a lot of times you'll have a, an administrative group or some other type of group. Uh, and then, of course, you have the file size and the, and the uh, timestamp, the last access of the file. Okay. So that's what the file attributes are. And specifically what we're really interested in is the permissions. So the file permissions, so I just took one of those lines uh, from, from the file and, and we have it here, uh, one of the lines of the attributes. And if we break down what the file permissions are over here, uh, the first letter tells you what type of file it is. So it's either going to be a regular file, which would have just a regular a dash. It would, it's going to be a directory, which is what we have here, which would have a D, or it would be a symbolic link, uh, which would have an L. Okay, And then the next three um, letters represent the owner's permissions. So in this case, the owner of this file has read, write, and execute privileges for this file. And I've broken it down here. Uh, the next three letters are the group's permissions. So in this case, the group has the ability to also read, write, and execute the file. And the final is everyone else's permissions. So in this case, everyone else, if you're not the owner or in the group, everyone else has the ability to read and execute this file but not write to it. So we can change the file permissions uh, using a command called chmod or change mode. Uh, and we do that so if we wanted to add, say, uh, the file, the ability to execute a file uh, to user, then we could use this command here. So chmod u plus x and then whatever that file is. And then down here in this table I've listed uh, the full uh, abbreviations for all the, the uh, options to chmod. So let's, let's just go ahead and go over to the terminal and do an example. So uh, we can create our own script file, uh, for instance, by um, we can create our own script file. Uh, in this case, we'll just uh, assign it to do the exact operation that an another file does. I mean, another operation. So we have the, the function or the command uh, rather date uh, on the Unix machine. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up. I know you guys don't know Vi yet, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and open up uh, Vi and create a, a script file, a bash script that we'll learn about soon, that will basically just uh, call date. So we're going to actually call this date.shell, okay, for shell script. And in this, uh, we're just going to call date, okay? So our shell script doesn't do much. It certainly doesn't do anything new. Uh, but normally we would execute that by uh, simply running the file like this. Okay? It gives us a permission denied error. And the reason for that is if we look at the long listing, 
we can see there's no execute permissions for that file, including for me, the owner. Uh, so if we want to add execute for the, the owner or the user, what we would do is say chmod u plus x date. Okay, now we should be able to execute this command and it just reproduces the functionality of the regular built-in date command, of course. And so now if we look at the ah, sorry. If we look at the permissions that the user does have in fact execute privileges. So we could also uh, we could also add execute privileges uh, for the group and and for uh, others, and we could do this uh, actually all at once by adding, uh, by using A. So if we say chmod A for all plus execute date, okay, then anyone else on the computer who, basically anyone uh, that had access to this folder could, could then execute the command. Okay, so you can actually set the permissions in an absolute way th using something called octals. So octal permissions are, you know, essentially numbers uh, that we would that you actually use three of: one for the user, one for the group, and one for everyone else uh, to set the permissions uh, explicitly. So if we go back, we can actually set no permissions to back to date. So if we chmod 000, the first zero would be for the user, the second zero for the group, and the third zero for everyone else. Uh, we, if we set that to date.shell and then we long list, you can see that uh, no one has permission to do anything to this file, read, write, or execute it. Um, we could also uh, give it the maximum amount of permissions by uh, d d using 777. So we would say 777 date now if we long list it you'll see that it should have every permission possible. So uh, the user group and anyone else on the computer can read, write, and execute this file. Uh, finally, uh, the, we can have the ability to change the owner or the group through a command uh, called chown, so uh, for change owner. So sometimes uh, if we um, copy or move files, uh, we can end up with the file permissions uh, not transferring ownership of the file correctly and if we need to fix that we can use the change owner command. So uh, I give some examples here um, about how to do it. It's not going to be that interesting to do an example on, on, on the, in the terminal because I happen to own all the files so and I don't have enough permissions to actually tr transfer ownership to anyone else. So typically these are uh, applied from a, a, a root or a, a systems administrator level, uh, the, ch the change of ownership files are. So I, I won't be able to do an interesting example from the terminal here, uh, but, but you on your local machine or if you have a system administrator privileges may find that you need to uh, change the ownership uh, occasionally of a file. And uh, I'll direct you, I just wanted you to be aware of it and I'll direct you to the man page uh, for more information. So this concludes our lecture on file attributes.